welcome to Phoenix TV, the TV show that follows Manchester's fastest and most exciting sports team, the Manchester Phoenix. On this week's show, we have player interviews and match highlights. We're going to start, as always, with the fashion news, I mean, uh, the hockey news, with, uh, with, with Tambo all dolled up. Don't you scrub up well? It's called sartorial elegance. It's called summer, but I don't think we can we can air it at this I'll time. I'll teach you about it later. <laughs> anyway, quite a bit of news on the player front this week. The Steel Dogs released the netminder Flavel at his own request, and they signed an import goalie, Dalibor Sedlar, his name is. Useful junior career and played some games in the Czech second league, so he could be pretty useful. The Tigers have signed Czech forward Thomas Karpov to try and get their offence going. This guy really does look a good signing for them with experience in the WHL and the Czech second division. As we know, Derek and Kieran have gone, signing up for Coventry Blaze and Jets respectively. And the Nicky Watts saga of where he's going should be revealed next week as he plays his last game this weekend for the Wildcats. Bison is still my call for that one. So on to the Sunday games from last week. Brilliant game at Ice Sheffield, but the Dogs came from behind to take a penalty shot win against the Bison after a 3-3 draw. Bees and the Flames in a topsy-turvy game. The Flames coming out 6-4 winners. That's four losses out of five for Bracknell. That's going to be a bit worrying for them. They'll be looking over their shoulders at the Dogs and the Phantoms. Phantoms, they lost 4-3 home to the Jets, with a side winning it in penalties after a very, very late equaliser. And now my favourite one of the week, Tigers 4, Wildcats 8. Not for the result, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Another heavy defeat for the Tigers, who really could do with a change of fortune. Level after the first period, Wildcats, well known, offence took over for a comfortable win. Unusual occurrence here though, Nicky Watt had a fight, that's not unusual, but he had a fight with Baz Hollyhead, the Tigers <laughs> goalie. That led to a little bit of nonsense with both of them giving six minutes worth of minors. How about that one, Pete? It's, uh, it's a little different, isn't it? I mean, obviously Hollyhead signed his emergency cover or something, it's, it's, so that's one way of getting yourself in with the fans and becoming a fan favourite, is having a, having a goalie scrap, I guess. Uh, yeah, a little, little different. Like I said, when not nothing too sort of like shocking with with his opponent, but uh, yeah, hopefully uh, Steve Phone and George Al Hadj aren't going to be taking too many notes for that one. Baz has always been a loon. <laughs> be good to see you. See you next week, Baz. Right, that just leaves our game with Milton Keynes. What a refreshing victory for the boys. Worked hard and a really, really good win. Yeah, it was a cracking win. Again, it was probably a bit closer than the scoreline sort of like sort of showed on the board, but yeah, Phoenix kind of really dug in and that, and I think. Played a really good game. Right, uh, that puts us onto the league table then. Well, if we look at it, Flames are playing well. They're on 50 points. The Bison are a point behind on 49. Then we're on 46. Bit of a gap. Lightning 39, Jets 38, the Wildcats 35, the Bees 31, and the Phantoms 29. That leaves the Steel Dogs starting to catch up with 25. And I'm afraid Tigers do really look like they've got a long way to go with just nine points. Beginning to settle down, Pete, isn't it? Yeah, it's, I think, uh, like I said, a couple of clubs there maybe breaking away from the main pack for who are going to be your, your title contenders. And uh, another group that going to be there or thereabouts for the playoffs. And then, unfortunately, you've got Telford, who, with all the problems they've had with players coming and going and coming and going, and, but it was really kind of disrupted any kind of momentum they've had. Um, so, yeah, you... So it's starting to settle into to what you, you're going to kind of see at the end of the season now, I think. Well, the Tigers will still cause us problems next week, no matter what. Oh, yeah, they'll definitely have a say in who, who's going to win the title for sure. I mean, it's one of those teams where you, th you look at it and you may get sort of like tricked in thinking there's an easy two points and that they come out and end up taking the points off you and you're kind of left there and what, what the hell just happened? So, yeah, it's, although it's not going well for them, they're still going to cause a few upsets. So on to tonight and... Uh... Guildford's brought a good crowd with them tonight, there's about 60, 70 of them. At top of the table clash, Guildford got to play Basingstoke tomorrow night. Basingstoke's at Slough tonight. We're getting to the nitty gritty, we're getting to the games that matter now, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, we played Guildford earlier on the season and won them like home and away. Uh, so I think you've mentioned before, we know how to beat them now. Um, but again, that doesn't mean this is a foregone conclusion. Guildford, at that point, was struggling a little bit. They seem to have found a bit of form now. So it's going to be a very, very tough game for Phoenix. but. You know, I'm, I'm still fairly confident. We just got to find a way to stop the old man, Lobby Longstaff. He's scoring for fun. He's way he's ahead in the scoring charts and everything. You know, he's a he's a he's a pensioner for heaven's sake, <laughs> and he's he's just having a fantastic season. Yeah, again, he's he's riding the scoring charts really high, isn't he, at the moment? I mean, 
you always expect him to put up the points, but I don't think anyone expects him to be sort of where he is in the charts right now. Yeah, you know, it's one of those where Gilbert got quite a lot of plays. He shut down Longstaff. He's still got Huppe and, and others who can kind of step up to the plate. So it's, I think all three lines are really going to be called into play defence as well as trying to score goals. I think, well, we've got Robert Schnabel back tonight and uh, Liam, Liam Chong seems to be settling in well. So, yep. no, I think uh, this is going to be a table topper and I think it's going to be an absolute cracker. Absolutely. Well, the games between Guildford and Phoenix usually are, so hopefully that will continue. And hopefully, for, for us anyway, that we get the two points. Well, that's just about talked it to death, I think. Uh, <laughs> shall we? Go on, I'll let you finish it and take it away. Let's go and watch some good hockey. From behind the Guildford net, long shot comes in, pad stop made by Steve Folk. Duggan trying to force it past Curtis Uppy, who ties him up the flames, have the puck. Down in the corner it is Huppe that looks to try and backhand it around, but it's intercepted, chipped up off the boards. Plays it on to the right-hand side, Bentham will clear it down into the Gilpin zone, as David Savage loses his edge, and there goes the goal. And the Old Tringham Ice has its first victim, but probably not last victim, of the evening's proceedings. Draw comes back to the line, Pozzerville fans on the clearance, it's been intercepted and in comes Ben Campbell, he shoots, phone makes the stop, Rempel gets on to the rebound but he's forced wide, Campbell. and now Campbell in behind the goal again, Plant crashing the net, gets the tip and phone makes the stop on Rick Plant, nobody read the break to the front of the net but Steve Phone makes the stop and keeps it nil-nil. Face off is won by the Phoenix. They work it back to the line. Neil fakes the shot. It's Bentham on the hash marks this time. Off he shoots. Lee makes the stop. Rebound in behind the net. Skeen gets there ahead of Andy McKinney. Schnabel pinched in. Bentham has it at the line. Plays it towards the back goal. McKinney, good stop by Lee as he read it well. Lidgid backhands up off the boards. McKinney keeps him close towards the net. Rebound will be covered up by Mark Lee. Good stick work from Tony Hand and he'll get it onto the wing to fire Michael Cerny, his hand got taken down, nice little give and go shot from Flatten and Lee will hold on again, played ahead, the Flames have kept it in the zone, Stuart Potts sharp angle effort, Foam making the stop, Potts gets it back the second time, Foam makes the save, loose puck well picked up, Andy McKinney turns nicely away from Ricky Skeen, trying to come out, front comes off the side, the goal gets taken down and again Tom Perrin says nothing doing, the fans don't like it as Dean Holland leaves the puck for Neil Lidgard, long pass has missed everybody and that's an icing call on the Guildford Flames. Schnabel waited then played it up onto the wing, it's bounced down into the Guildford zone, Phoenix are going hard on the forecheck, Duggan with a big hit on Bronislav Vettan, Mackenzie played it out in front, Archer couldn't get there as Kohut came barreling in again, it's Huppe down the left side, Longstaff is the trailer, good stick Barry Mackenzie to knock that one away, Duggan Oh, the Phoenix flipped it ahead, McKinney, hit comes in from behind and the first penalty of the game will be called and guess who, it's Andrew Sharp, it's a boarding penalty and the Phoenix have the first power play. On to the wing it goes, Liam Chong will carry it ahead, he left it inadvertently but quite nicely and in comes Andy McKinney, cuts the middle, he shoots, he scores! Andy McKinney with a brilliant solo effort as he cut through David Savage like a knife through butter and picks out the top corner on Mark Lee. The ice stone goes mad, 10 on the year for Andy McKinney, the Phoenix lead by a goal to nil. As he stick tied up, sharp angle effort didn't get through, long pass finds Michael Cerny, away he comes, it's a two on one. Cerny dropping it back, flattened back towards Cerny, who knocks it down, but Mark Lee gets across. Great chance for the Phoenix. But Cerny... Your old car, seen better days, given up the ghost? You need the friendly guys at Davidson's. One phone call is all you need. They'll collect your car for free, sort out that nasty paperwork, and transform your old banger into lots of lovely cash. Because Davidson's are extremely reputable and recommended by the DVLA. So for the best prices, cash on the spot and to scrap your car with confidence, call us on 0161 928 9981. Davidson's, we're talking scrap.
pass towards the bench. Flatten got a piece of it. Michael Cerny gets onto it. Sharp angle effort and he scores! How on earth has that one got past Mark Lee? He was tight on the post. The Flames are furious. They wanted an offside at the blue line. Michael Cerny, if you don't shoot, you won't score. He's got 25 on the season. A goal out of absolutely nothing doubles the Phoenix lead. It's 2-0 Manchester. Flat in behind the net. Hand goes for the first time. Pass it deflects. Cerny trying to knock it in. Goes right through the crease. Comes out the other side. The Flames get away with one there. And away come the Phoenix. Cerny delays, finds, hand plays it across the ice. Schnabel has the puck down into the corner for Cerny. And now hand again, Boothroyd sneaking in. One time, a scores! Luke Boothroyd with a hammer of a shot as he came in off the line. Hand set it up on a plate. Luke Boothroyd has his ninth goal of the season. It's a power play goal. And the scoreboard reads Phoenix 3, Guildford Flames 0. Rempel playing it round the boards. Savage knocking it through. Possible under pressure gets it across to James Neal. Who had it roll off his stick shot from Campbell. Glove saved by Steve Foam. Rempel trying to jam it in off the netminder. Posivil's touch a little bit heavy. Campbell did just about keep that one in. But then overskates the puck. Bentham comes in. They fall down in a heap. The Flames have the puck. Metan's pass finding Rick Plant, who cuts towards the net. Had the puck roll off his stick. We play it towards the bench. That's got to be too many men, surely. Nothing called, though, as Hand has. The puck gets it onto the wing. It's flat, and he shoots up high over the top of Mark Lee. Archer down the left side, keeps the puck, keeps the puck, backhands it nicely through towards Michael Cerny. He's kept it well away from Ricky Skeen, he played it out in front, Pozzaville finds it and scores! Andre Pozzaville pinching in off the blue line, finds himself all alone in front of the net. And when Pozzi's alone in front, the salute is coming. He's got his goal, he's ninth of the season. The Phoenix are pulling away from Guildford. They lead by four goals to nil. And it's Potts that has it, can't dig it out of his feet though. And James Neal clears away, Flatten reels it in and in come the Phoenix. Big shot from Flatten, pad save from Hadfield and the Flames clear the puck all the way down the ice for an icing call on Guildford. Phoenix TV fan spotlight. I'm here with Dave Kinsey, who also doubles up as the supporters up chairman. Hi, Dave. How did you do, man? <laughs> well, what about this tonight? Nobody expected this, did they? No, excellent game tonight. Uh, I don't think you've seen the last of Guildford, though. They could come back at us. They're always a dangerous team, so. But it's always good to see off Mark Lee, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's very right. I don't, has he been pulled before? I can't remember him being pulled any time. Well, without sounding too rude, I've heard that he quite often pulls himself. Quite often, with the when he's having a bad game, he says, "No, I want to go." Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's what I heard. Yeah, yeah, maybe understand that then. Yeah, but um, this game's not over, but I think we're in a good position. I think we should take it now, though. But we have some cracking goals. Yeah, I mean, I'll the ball. Yeah. I mean, that, that power play goal. You're not seeing any better than that anywhere. No, no, no. And Andy McKinney's goal at the start. An excellent goal, that one. Yeah, really enjoyed tonight. So, well, let's hope it continues. Thanks very much, Dave. Okay, thanks a lot. Phoenix TV here again with, uh, I've got Andrew Ellis, otherwise known as, I think, is it Rami Rascal, you call yourself? Yeah, that's where I live. Right, so what do you think of this tonight? Well, I have to say, a lot more comfortable than I was expecting. I never expected us to be 4-0 up at this stage of the game. We're just dominating them. Well, the good thing, as I said to uh, David before, we've seen off Mark Lee and that's always a good thing. Yeah, he is one of, on his day, he's one of the best goalies in the league, but we just drove him out of the game. You think we can hold on to this? Well, anything can happen. I've been coming 16 years, but I think, yeah, I think we'll do enough to get the two points tonight. Thanks, Andrew. You're welcome. James Hadfield on Michael Cerny, and then Hadfield very sportingly puts the goal back on as the puck is backhanded ahead by Schnabel. Cerny into the zone. He comes flattened back door. Michael Cerny scores. A wonderfully simple goal from the Manchester Phoenix. Were perfect pass and Cerny tipping it past the pad of James Hadfield. Second of the game, 26th of the season. 
40 seconds on the clock. And whatever Paul Dixon said in the intermission, it's not worked, it's 5-0. Longstaff's pass towards the wing, Huppy gets their good stick lift by James Neal. In he comes, he shoots Hadfield with the good save and he will hold on. It's Duggan getting it out of his feet, he drops it back, shot from Archer, well blocked by Kohut. He lost his stick, the puck was in his feet, he then swings his arm around and Tom Perring says, you can't do that. It's a high sticking call on David Longstaff, somewhat mystifyingly, who I think has taken one for the team there because if Kohut had gone, the Flames would have been an import down. He didn't quite find it. Hand back out to Schnabel, big shot comes off the mask of Hadfield and bounces away. He walks in, finds Cerny in the corner, hand moving down, flattened in the face of Cerny. Shot deflects and they score. Well, it's all going right tonight for the Manchester Phoenix as the shot from Joachim Flatten hits the stick of Ricky Skeen. James Hadfield was helpless. Flatten is on the score sheet as well. It's another power play goal. And the Manchester Phoenix lead the league leading Guildford Flames by six goals to nil. Turns away from Andy McKinney, plays it. The one-two with Jess London and will carry it ahead. Tries to drive his way through Possible muscling him out of the way, Campbell avoids one check but not the one from McKinney, Skeen from the line, it's deflected and it goes in, may well have been a tip in front but the shutout is broken with 14.23 to go and the Flames fans have finally got something to shout about, it's 6-1 and finds Duggan who backhands it ahead, Archer will chase in, Bass just lumbed in, McKenzie with the hit in the corner as well McKenzie trying to jam it out in front, it comes off the side of the goal. Kvetan on to the right hand side. Holland it is that cuts through, tries a toe drag on Robert Schnabel and you were not getting past Big Rob there. Dean Plant went near side, he couldn't get it through. Chong picks up on that loose puck, threads it through, rolls off the stick of Andy McKinney and bounces just wide. Chong into the slot, was looking for Bentham, but Plant read it and knocks it away. Hughes down in the corner, but he gets it through to Tony Hand. Slides it across, one-timer from Flatten, and Hadfield makes the glove save and holds on. Possible playing it through, Flatten gains the zone, has Hand in the slot. Backdoor, good stop by Hadfield on Joachim Flatten. Holland comes in and bumps him as well. Flatten taken into the boards by London, Cerny has the puck. He stick handles his way through, he deeks, he deeks, good pad stop by Hadfield, nobody knows where the puck is and the Guildford netminder will hold on as Michael Cerny deeked just about every player there was to deep on the ice. Away comes Michael Cerny, could be a two on one if they play it right, Cerny coming in, he stick handles, Hadfield gets a piece, it's knocked away, Cerny trying to come out front, he shoots, Hadfield makes the save, the puck's there and the buzzer goes. And it's been a dominant performance from start to finish by the Manchester Phoenix. Guildford were top of the league, but you wouldn't know it. They have been beaten and soundly beaten. The final score tonight is the Manchester Phoenix 6, the Guildford Flames 1. Phoenix TV here in Tambo. The final score tonight, Phoenix 6, Guildford 1. And I'm here with their man of the match, Ben Campbell. Ben, I don't think any league would have, could have come up with a score like that tonight. No, we, we definitely weren't expecting to come in here and um, play the way we did. Um, we, ju we, we were working hard, but we just weren't working smart enough. Um, and obviously that cost us goals at the end of the day. Um, we just need to, we, we need to come in here and like lift our heads up next time and just... Know, know what we're playing against, be smarter, and then hopefully we'll come out with the right result. And say so you've, you've done it, you've done it before, and uh, yeah, I mean, let's face it, you're a good side. Okay, tonight everything we we touched looked good. The execution was was there, but you've done it to us. Yeah, yeah, like it works both ways. Some day, some days it's your your day, like and today was not our day, and it was Manchester's, and uh, they like they outplayed us, so like they deserve the the victory in the end. And so it makes Bison an important one for you tomorrow night, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, that that game's huge for us. We we just had a uh, conversation in there, and um, like, don't dwell on this. We've we've won. I, I think we've gone on a 19-game spell where we've done we've done really well. So um, we need to go in uh, uh, against the Bison tomorrow and get the two points, like, and just do the job. 
Oh, absolutely. But still, long way to go. And of course, that makes our cup semi-final a bit mouth-watering, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely it does. Um, like Manchester have, got, have had the upper hand on us this year, so we definitely want to prove prove that we can uh, we can beat them. Um, and the cup semi-final, it's always intense, so it should be it should be a good rivalry. Ben, thanks very much for coming out tonight, and uh, it's going to be a long journey back tonight, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's uh, about four hours, I think. So um, we'll have a we'll watch a movie on the bus and just see what happens. So. Thanks, man. All uh, right, cheers. Thank you very much. Phoenix TV here. Final score, as I said before, 6-1 to the Phoenix. Michael, 6-1 against the league leaders. What a fantastic result tonight. Yeah, I agree. It was a great game for us. Uh, great result, obviously. And uh, But uh, it was a great effort from everybody. And uh, I think we, after all, we deserved, deserved those two points. That's right. Every line tonight some Stevie Fawn, the D and all three lines it really was a good performance by every one of them yeah I agree I think everyone has done uh, their job pretty much perfectly tonight and uh, as I said before I think we uh, deserve those two points there's no doubt about it so on to Telford tomorrow we've got to take that form into it they they gave us a lesson last time it's payback <coughs> yeah each I mean each, each game is different and uh it's not going to be an easy game, obviously, even though Telford is uh, at the bottom now. But still, we have to really hard for it, and uh, we have to deserve those two points. So we'll see. Michael, good luck tomorrow. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. OK, post-match uh, wrap-up here. I'm here with the boss, Neil, and uh, nearly new addition to the squad. He's taking his time coming to us, but he certainly made a great start. Liam Chong, hi, Liam. Hi, how you doing? Hi Neil. Hi, how are you doing? Right, uh, a lot of happy faces in the dressing room tonight, Liam. Yeah. What a good, good win. Yeah, very important win today. Um, they're only a few points ahead of us now, I think, so uh, it makes a big difference like, to catch up with them now. Big team, uh, very like high in the league, I think, like that. So hopefully we do well. Well, certainly it's a great result for us. I mean, Guildford's heads really looked down at the end of the game, which, you know, the league leaders, they're, not, they're there for a reason. We, we, we actually dominated them tonight, I think. I agree. I think from start to finish, we had a game plan and we just followed through with it throughout the whole game and just dominated the first period, third period, and it showed 6-1 win. I think that was one of the best things about tonight, Neil, the execution on everything, the power play. I mean, that first power play goal was just a joy to watch. Yeah, I think sometimes, you know, th things take a long time to come together. And to be fair, Liam been in a few weeks now and has watched what's been going on I mean what makes it difficult for the players and I know I've said this before and I don't want to bore people Jim but we, we've been playing with different lines every week moving players around you know forwards playing as defenders defenders as forwards it, make, it makes it very difficult you know Liam Liam probably be the first person to say in fact I'm going to ask you Liam uh, m must be more difficult learning to play with your line mates tonight than it is actually getting back into playing hockey yeah definitely it's just uh, like you always change around, so you've got to kind of adapt to how they play, see what they're going to do, kind of anticipate what they're going to do at the same time. So I think once that's, everything starts gets flowing, you get regular lines going, everything will start to flow a lot better and hopefully more wins will come out of it. Yeah, and I thought their line looked good tonight, actually. You know, they, 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 they caught them off guard quite a few times and you had a few good moments in front of the net that you, I could see you were trying to kick yourself against the wall afterwards. <laughs> yeah, no, I should have buried a few tonight, but uh, it'll come, it'll come. I think the good thing, uh, when you matched up the two third lines tonight, our third line destroyed them tonight, and that the things they, they, they dominated them completely. But I noticed you were getting a bit of time on the penalty kill as well. Yeah, Tony said to me that uh, he wants me killing. I think he wants to utilise my speed. I just skate after people and uh, chase them. <laughs> well, that's one thing we were talking about was just when we saw you on your, your first game. Yeah, got a bit of speed there, boy. Yeah, it's something I've always had. Like I think that's my best, like aspect of playing hockey I think I'm a quite good skater so I just try and use it to my best strength my legs up and just try and get faster yeah I think there was a little bit tonight wasn't there of uh, you against that far wall over there skating backwards waiting for the pass and as soon yeah. as it come actually letting the puck go past you and turning on it and yeah. actually really turning the gas up and going yeah. and you caught that forward completely off guard he was trying to oh, check yeah, you and you'd gone yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes you just got to catch them, off the, catch them on the wrong foot and I get a step ahead of them then I usually I like get away with it, but <laughs> just hopefully I don't get caught sometimes. Right, well, tomorrow night, Telford. Mm. Uh, I don't know whether you've been watching, you've obviously been watching the scores upon your rehabilitation, mm. but Telford did us last time. We, we owe them one, I think, tomorrow night. Yeah, Telford's a really, really hard place to go and play. Like I, don't, I haven't been to the new rink, apparently it's changed a lot there. But uh, last year, I went to play for Basingstoke, it was always the game I really didn't like to go and play. They're, 
you kind of underestimate them and it's just that's the whole like you need to keep like we need to keep today's momentum going same attitude as we had today and just go through and just destroy them really I think you know, don't, don't say anything naughty. No, I'm I've not. Just I've just had a right load of stick off Tony now. Last time we played um, Telford, Tony was on GB duty. Mm. And I had the bench. And they beat us 4-1. Oh. <laughs> Fortunately, we've got a proper bench coach this time. <laughs> and he just said to me downstairs, I'll show you how to do it tomorrow. And I just looked at him and went, that is tempting fate. <laughs> just to wrap it up, we really I mean a lot of happy smiling faces, as we say. The crowd were absolutely buzzing tonight. It was a great performance. Let's hope we take it on in tomorrow and you carry on the way you're going because you're doing fingers fine, buddy. Crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed I can keep it going. Wrists feeling good at the moment, so just got to keep it going. Fitness will come back gradually and hopefully the whole line, the whole team does really well for the rest of the season. I think we're on a good step right now. Yeah, I think so too. And I've got to be honest with you, I mean, Liam will agree with this. Anybody that didn't come tonight to watch this game will be kicking themselves because my, my, my big word tonight to everybody was outstanding. If you didn't see this game you missed an absolute great game because the team played really well for three periods and I couldn't fault them. Absolutely outstanding. Great game. Well, let's move on to tomorrow then. Of course, uh, next week we're away to Basingstoke on the Saturday and I think it's Peterborough on the Sunday. That with the usual 5.30 face-off. So, listen, you really need to get down here and see what this team's doing this season. They've got it. They're showing us it. Come and look at it for yourself. And if you haven't, come and watch this lad because he's definitely got the wheels. <laughs> see you soon. Good night. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we've got for this episode of Phoenix TV. But remember, if you have anything that you want answered, you can submit your questions via the usual ways, by text, by email, and, of course, the official Phoenix Forum. Now, before we go, I've got to mention we do have a new women's team that's launching in Widnes on the 22nd of January. Session times are 10 to 11 p.m. So if you're interested, make sure you get in touch and let the Phoenix office know. We also have a sled session on before that, which is 8.45 till 9.45. Again, starting on the 22nd of January. And again, it's for open to anybody, no matter ability or anything like that. So get, again, get in touch, give you more information. Now, if you want to keep up with that and everything else that's going on in the world of Phoenix, you can check out the official Facebook page, Twitter accounts, and, of course, the official Phoenix web, web page as well. I forgot my words then. And also, don't forget to check out the official Phoenix podcast for something just a little bit different. Now, our next game is against Peterborough, and that's on Sunday, the 20th of January. Face-off is at half past five, so I guarantee it's going to be a classic. We hope to see you and a lot of people down there to try and cheer the boys on and try and get back to the top of the league. But from me and everyone here at the rink, we'll see you soon. <laughs>